this because it's going to be nice. Look at the question number one. Which international organization has released the World Investment Report 2019? If you look at the report 2019, the question itself says it's investment report. When you look at the options, option A speaks about monetary. So monetary has to do with money. So this may not be the exact answer. Asian Development Bank, so it deals with the banking. World Bank deals with the banking. And look at the option D, United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. So investment is almost similar to business. A business needs investment and trade. So possibly, when you look at this, easily you can have a glance and tell the answer. It is option D. So the World Investment Report 2019 was released by United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. Why this report is important for exam? Because this, this report also speaks about the FDA inflows. The foreign direct investment inflows that flows in our country. And the, the report says very favor to India. Question number two. Consider the following statements regarding United Nations Convention on Combat Desertification. When you look at this question, this question deals with what? Climate change. This question deals about climate change. climate change there is a department called UNFCC, United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. So possibly whatever UNFCC handles that should be a part of UNCC. So UNCC stands for United Nations Convention on Combating Desertification. Desertification is in fact one of the way that leads to food insecurity. So India is also a member of this convention. The statement says India is set to host the 14th session of the Conference of Parties, COP14, of the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification for the first time. That sounds very clear. So, India being a member of it, so India need to also follow that. It was during Indira Gandhi period, there was a program called National Desertification, sorry, <coughs> Desert Developmentation Development Program was launched. So, India having a close to eight kind of different soils. One such kind of soil is a desert soil. So wherever there is a desert, that leads to food insecurity and that further leads to what? A climate change aspect. So one sounds good, correct. The secretariat of UNCCD is located in Bonn in Germany. Not only this secretary, by the way, almost very closely 21 international climate change bodies all have the headquarters in the Bonn. So this relates to something called Bonn Challenge or Bonn Convention also. Right statement. It is the first and only international legally binding framework set up to address the problem of desertification and other land issues. In fact, it is very rare because when you see the term convention, convention is a, a group, an association, come with a very common agenda. Not every convention can be an act because by nature every state is a sovereign. Every state is a sovereign. So, once a bill is accepted, once a convention is into acceptance, it should be passed by in the form of a bill in a respective body. So there are many, many conventions that India was a member, but we did not accept that and we did not make a law based or legislation to that. But this is something very interesting. This is one of the first of its kind and it's a legally binding and India accepted this convention strategy. So option is all the above are correct. Question number three, which of the following are true about the Chandrayaan 2?
know that the Chandrayaan mission during the Atal Bihari was it was a very successful mission, and they thought to continue this second mission, but that took a very long time, and it was in the 2019 that came into news. The mission Chandrayaan 2 is similar to like exploring the moon. Moon. Though Chandrayaan 1 also explored moon through its rover, but it was a very partially uh, data was available. However, this Chandrayaan 2 is going to focus on certain aspects like the raw materials. The raw materials you're going to find on the moon. That's an interesting one. Recently, China landed its rover on the southern pole. The southern pole of moon. Now it's very interesting to know that Earth revolves around the sun, revolves around the sun and rotates itself. And moon rate itself and revolves around the moon, earth. So, both are going to maintain same relative speed. That clearly shows that any ten point when you see the moon, you're going to see only one part of the moon. But now we are trying to launch it on the other side, that is what you call the southern pole. That was the major intention of the Chandrayaan mission. Recently, China already successful in this and we are now going to continue this program in the form of Chandrayaan. It is India's first mission to land near the lunar south pole and that was the main purpose of it. Chandrayaan 2 will scale the lunar surface and gather intel on minerals, rocks, formation and water. That's the right one. So the option is C. Both are right. Question number 4. One health concept recently seen in the news means the name itself is very clear that they are speaking about certain universal program. is going to be a very general one, it's a very wider concept that's going to create a kind of a for man, animal and environment. If we are able to balance the three, then possibly we can balance health aspect here. It was proposed by the who? WHO. So the answer is <coughs> option C, interconnectivity among human health, animal health and the environment. Option 5. So question number 5. Project Sashat has been launched. What is this Project Sashat? The term Sashat over here means strengthening. Strengthening what? Strengthening the bad loans especially in this bad loans of public sector banks. So the reason is it speaks about credit strengthening. They want to create a kind of credit availability. So they want to create a credit culture and also possibly they want to strengthen the banks. Such a way the project shift is going to be. So they are going to deal under this program. The statement is, Project Shashat has been launched is a scheme that aims to strengthen the credit capacity, credit culture and credit portfolio of the public sector banks. Side statement. Consider the following statements regarding governor rule of the state of Jammu and Kashmir. The Seventy of Indian Constitution gives a special status to Jammu and Kashmir. Accordingly, respect in the concept of federalism, respect in the concept of federalism, okay, the emergency, the respect to Jammu and Kashmir. For the first six months, it is imposed that is called as a governor's rule. Six months called governor's rule, and if we extend that, it's going to be called as the president's rule. President. So, let us see the statements. Since JNK has a separate constitution, governor's rule is supposed to impose under Article 92 of JNK constitution for six months for often approved by the president. That's right statement. 
Because who proclaims emergency? The answer is President of India. In the government's rule, state assemblies either suspend or dissolve. Now only they are going to suspend it. If at all they dissolve it, there is a condition that an election should happen within six months. So to avoid this election, normally the central government what they do, they are going to suspend the government. If the constitutional machinery is not restored before the expiry of six months of the governor rule, the governor's rule can be extended for six months with the approval of the president rule. The third statement sounds incorrect because it's not the governor rule going to be extended, it's now going to be called as the president rule. So statement three is incorrect. So option one and two are correct. Question number seven speaks about regarding economic capital framework. This economic capital framework is in fact to know the RBI reserves. How the reserves can be safeguarded? Or these days, if you observe, RBI is undergoing certain even crisis because the banks are not performing very well. So, monetary, if banks are not performing very well, definitely that's going to affect the monetary policy of RBI. So, let us see the statement. The economic capital framework reflects the capital that an institution requires or needs to hold as a counter against unforeseen risk or events or losses in the coming future. That's why we say that it's going to be act like a cushion. Cushion so that anytime any circumstances, any <coughs> unforeseen conditions happen, then RBA can use this reserve as a buffer stock. They're going to help them, they, they can help RBA to overcome that crisis. This economic capital, in the term sense, it's very clear. Economic is always refers to certain economic aspects. Capital over here refers to certain asset in the form of liquidity, or it can be of any form. And framework is certain guidelines. So guidelines, statement two, an export panel of RBS economic capital framework headed by ex-RBI governor Abhimanyu Jalan was formed to address the reserve issues of RBI reserves. Normally, whenever someone wants to give a framework, of an institution, we normally expect a person from the same background going to be appointed. And that's how Vimal Jalan was appointed to look this economic capital framework and said to deliver the guidelines. The option 7 is both are correct. Question number 8 speaks about discrete declaration. Question number 8 speaks about discrete declaration. is very easy to understand. Bishkar declaration recently news is related to. You know that the Bishkar is a place, especially the capital of Kyrgyzstan. The Kyrgyzstan capital is Bishkar. So definitely the option has to be read with Kyrgyzstan. G20, Kyrgyzstan is not a, cap, not a member of G20. So it cannot be that. IOC is about Islamic organization. So it is not a member of OIC. So it's not an option. IPSA, the name itself is very clear that IPSA stands for India, Brazil, South Africa. So there's no option of Kyrgyzstan here. And the option is SCO. Shanghai Cooperation Organization, there is going to be Central Asian countries. Among Central Asian countries, you observe Kyrgyzstan is a member, and that's not recently. India and its co-members collectively signed a document that speaks about a visual declaration that deals about how to counter the terrorist groups in these countries. So it was a common agenda, common guidelines they formed under the visual declaration. So that's his D scope. Question number nine speaks about national rural drinking water. Consider the following statements about the National Rural Drinking Water. National Rural Drinking Water Program is a centrally sponsored scheme aimed at 
providing every person in the rural area with adequate, safe water for drinking, cooking and other domestic basic needs in a sustainable manner. That sounds very clear because Ministry of Drinking Water, one of the core objectives is to provide the drinking water facility throughout India that includes both the urban and the rural areas. <coughs> NRDWP is continued is a co chairman with the 14th Finance Commission. The 14th Finance Commission, the 14th Finance Commission, headed by Viability, although spoke about certain grants allocation on that year, we're going to speak about the water distribution and this can consider to be like, is in fact a co chairman to this resolution. National Water Quality Sub Mission is a sub program of NRDWP and that's how both can come under one category. So NRDWP, NRDWP can work it very properly and that's option is all the above. Question number 10 speaks about a leader of opposition, the either house of the Parliament of India. If you observe very carefully, the word leader of opposition is nowhere mentioned in the constitution. All the parliamentary privileges, all the parliamentary privileges were taken inspired from the British constitution. Taken from the British constitution. And as far as British conventions, the minority leader, that means a party which got less majority compared to the majority party, that is called as minority. And is called as minority leader. Similarly, we are going to have majority leader. It is considered to be like a majority leader is going to be the prime minister and minority leader is considered to be leader of the position. Interesting part is there is no where it is mentioned that a minority leader should be mentioned or anywhere in the part of constitution. Here, as far as Indian constitution, there is no term. However, there is an act respect to certain his salaries. So let us look at the question. The position of leader of opposition received statutory recognition through the salaries and allowances of leaders of opposition in Parliament 17, 1977. This in fact, that is the only act if you observe in the year 1977 that spoke a party that gets majority, that's in fact 10% of the majority and that majority party in the Lok Sabha is going to be read as leader of opposition in Lok Sabha. Similarly, in the, in the Rajya Sabha, leader of so these people are considered to be what the minority leaders. The major agenda of this minority leader is to provide a constructive criticism, a criticism mechanism to the majority party, that is the ruling party. When no party in the Lok Sabha secures required seats to form an opposition party or to designate a leader of opposition, the matter is decided by the President of India. Please be very careful. When it comes to parliamentary privileges, the President has nowhere to be related. Though India follows a British constitution, it is a parliamentary form where the President is an integral part of parliament. The nation has to be taken by the head of the house, that is the Speaker of Lok Sabha or the Chairman of Rajya Sabha. So here, the President spoke role is minimal or we can say zero. So the option is only A, one. So let us look at the question number 11. Question number 11 speaks about so the maritime boundaries. The Strait of Homeros lies between Oman and Iran. A very important point to note something called the Persian Gulf. The Persian Gulf is in fact a gulf. A gulf is a, a water body where you want to see landmass surrounded by the three sides. Persian Gulf in, is surrounded by few countries. These are Qatar, UAE, 
Bahrain, Oman, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia and Iran. And when you look at the Persian Gulf, Persian Gulf region here, the Arabian Ocean, Arabian Sea region over here. Now there is a very small piece. That is Iran and Oman. Iran and Oman. And this part is what you are going to call as Gulf of and, and this is what you are going to be called as the Strait of Hormuz. So, the Strait of Hormuz lies between Oman and Iran. That's the right statement. It links the Persian Gulf in the south. No, it links the Persian Gulf in the west. Gulf of Oman in the north. Gulf of Oman on the east. And Arabian Sea beyond. That's the right statement. So, totally if you observe, two is a wrong one. Almost one fifth of the global oil supplies passes through the strait per day. That is right. One and three are correct. See. Question number 12. Which of the following are the possible demerits of the concept of one nation, one election? One nation, one election. The concept of one nation, one election refers to that the parliament and the state legislature should undergo elections simultaneously. So these are considered to be called simultaneous elections. That doesn't mean that everything should happen on a single day. They should happen similarly, that is simultaneously. Point over here is that Almost when we got independence, India followed the same strategy, but in the meanwhile, because of the foreign government, because of uh, frequent no governance motion in the central, that led to what center and the state, there was a certain rift between these elections, period. Now, the government of India is proposing the one nation, one election concept. Let us see the statements. Which of the following are the possible demerits? So, he's asking the negative aspects. What happens if you go for a one nation, one election? Premature dissolution of the state assemblies. That's right. Let's imagine the parliament elections are good. Lots of elections are going to be for five years. Let's imagine that this state has went for completed four years and they went into elections. That means both before they complete the fifth year, they are forced to dissolve the legislature. This lead to what? Dissolution of state legislature. Emergency of national narrative over regional issues. In fact, when the seven things are happening, the center has enough capacity or the central government has enough power to influence its decisions on the state in this way. The regional aspects are going to be diluted. So two sums, right. Uniformity in governance, that is a positive aspect of this one. So positive is that throughout India we are going to see one kind of governance, one kind of schemes, parallelly they are happening. Reduction of massive expenditure of election, even that was a very positive aspect. The interim elections and the uh, the, the elections gap between one and the other center of the state will lead to maximum expenditure of and in fact uh, uh, deployment of huge forces etc. So three, four are the positives and one, two are the negatives. So option A, one and two are correct. Which one of the following, which among these countries border Libya? Right, look at the Libya, which part of Africa it is, the north part of Africa. When you look at north part of Africa, when you look at the north part of Africa, the fixed boundaries with especially, the north you're going to see, Mediterranean Sea. That means what countries of North America, North Africa are making borders with some of the Sea. These are, just remember the trick called metals. Or the metal. M stands for Morocco. And E stands for Egypt. And now here you are going to see Libya. Now Libya is going to make borders with Tunisia or not. Algeria on the west, 
and the bottom if you observe it is going to be chat so if you look the options carefully Algeria, Tunisia, Niger, Egypt and Chad. Niger is in fact also the boundary. I is also the boundary of Libya. So option K is correct. If you just remember a trick called metal, you will have a client. Put in consider the following statements about acute encephalitis syndrome. It is caused by Japanese encephalitis virus. In fact, it also is caused by virus. It is characterized by the high fever and inflammation of brain. You know, this is widely seen in the northwest part of India, eastern part of India, Bihar, West Bengal, etc. So, it's a mosquito. The carrier is a mosquito. Hypoglycemia is a major cause of this death among young children due to AS. Hypoglycemia, hypo over here means low. Glycemia over refers to glucose means sugar. Because of the low sugar content in the blood, that leads to what? Content of and that finally leads to a slow death. Options are 1 to 3 are correct. Question number 15. Which of these are not correct about inter creditor agreement? In fact, the IC inter creditor agreement is a part of project Sashat. part of project Sarshit. This project will give certain power to the banks so they can cover their recover their bad loans. <coughs> so let us speak about what is this ICU. I am asking it's not a correct statement. Agreement is a part of project Sarshit. That's a right statement. The objective is to use this ICA for faster facilitation of resolution of stressed assets. In fact, assets which are bad loans, the major objective is to go for faster facilitation. It aims at the resolution of loans accounts with a size up to 50 crore only. That's a wrong statement because 50 below above 50. Below 50 is handled by the bank itself and above 50 is handled by ICA. So also tribunals. <clears throat> if 66% of the lenders agree to a resolution plan, it would be binding on all lenders. That's the right statement. So option is C is incorrect. 16. The rates in which the marine mammals get entangled are commonly called as. Recently we have seen the news of dolphins, turtles, all they were uh, getting caught under some kind of nets called ghost nets. Ghost nets are one of the man-made, man cause so we can say man-made reasons for the death of these married animals. Question number 17. Which of the following are not member of Financial Stability and Dis Development Council? This body was headed by Union Finance Minister so that how this financial stability is going is supposed to be decided in this framework. RB Governor is a member of that one. Secretary of Department Economic Affairs member of that one. SEBI member of that one. Kag is a constant body. How do you expect that to be a member of this one? So the option is no. D is correct. Kag being a constant body is not possible. 18. Operation Sunrise 2, which is in the news recently, is a coordinated operation of India and which neighboring country. In fact, we say Operation Sunrise. Operation Sunrise is in fact uh, it's happening in the northwest part of India. The major objective is to eliminate the terrorism, terrorist groups. Two countries came together, one is India and Myanmar. India and Myanmar, they both joined the hands to eliminate the terrorism. That is a termination, termination of elimination. Nation of the terrorist groups, thanks to Myanmar. 19. Which of this regarding ASI is true? ASI provides a direct cash compensation for sickness, disability, disablement, 
maternity death, occupational disease or death due to employment injury, etc. to organized sector employees and the dependents. That's in fact we can say uh, the ESA is a very narrow because it's only recognized with the working professionals and so and it's only about organized, not about an organized sector. That means the people with agricultural labor, not a part of an organized, they are not fit under ESA. ESA Act applies to premises where 10 or more persons are employed. That's right statement. Employees with wages up to 21,000 rupees, earlier 15,000 per month are entitled to the health insurance cover and other benefits of under the ESA Act. That's right statement. So all are correct. Question by 20. Libra, which was in the news recent, is right. You might have seen in the news that Libra was initiated by Facebook. What is this Libra, by the way? It's in fact a cryptocurrency launched by Facebook. by Facebook. What is this cryptocurrency? It is highly disliked by a virtue of money by the way. So that the positive about this cryptocurrency is that they are free from these borders. There is no state monitoring on that so there is no scope of one state monitoring or the other or one block or the other one. The positive aspect of the cryptocurrency is a financial inclusion. aspect of financial currency is security aspects. Though it has had a, a 12 digit security layer, still it is considered to be prone to uh, hacking. And that is there is no back, backup of the state. No backing of the state that really shows that if someone, not, someone did not accept the uh, cryptocurrency then possibly there is no one to handle this one. So it is not a statement whether it is a private one, so it is going to be a Facebook. Like the rumor, petrol currency, petrol currency was launched by Renzilla to overcome the crisis. So option is, it's a cryptocurrency. Option D. Question number 21, areas of following national parks, wildlife sanctuaries from north to south direction. Indravati National Park, Nagarhole, look at carefully. National parks in India, Indravati, Indravati National Park is in Chhattisgarh. It's known for wild buffalo, the state animal of Chhattisgarh. Number two, Nagar Hole. Nagar Hole, Ai Hole, they all fall in Karnataka. Karnataka. Silent Valley National Park is well known in the Kerala region. Fourth is Kuringa Wildlife Sanctuary in Andhra Pradesh. When you look in the order, the order comes this way. So one, and then Andhra Pradesh, and then Karnataka. And then Kerala is the last one. So look at the order, it's 1, 4, 2, 3. That's right statement. With reference to Jal Shakti Ministry, consider the following statements. It was formed after merger of Ministry of Water Resources, River Development, and Ganga Rejuvenation, along with the drinking water sanitation. To overcome, because water is both a state list and also in the central list, that clearly shows a concurrent list aspect. So both have a uh, the part to make the laws so to avoid such kind of conflicts. So one among them, if you observe the Ganga Namami scheme, though it was launched in 2014, till today it was not coming to a complete implementation because states are not cooperating with the center. So to avoid such kind of uh, technical issues and institutional problems, has, India has come with a new initiation called, initiated new ministry called Jal Shakti Ministry. It's a combination of Minister of Drinking Water and Minister of Water Resources. National mission of Clean Ganga is implemented by Ministry of Jal Shakti. That is the major purpose, one of the major objectives of Jal Shakti Ministry to come forward. And both are right. Which among the following statements is all correct regarding the Spitzer space technology? Recently, Spitzer technology was in use because in the year 2003 it was initiated and it has been a very long time. It 
function very well in the outer space, able to collect the data of a Saturn remaining satellites through its IR waves. But now they are the NASA is planning number to dismantle it. So European is planning to dismantle it. NASA is planning to dismantle it also. It has observed and revealed the rings about the Saturn. That's right statement. It has replaced the Hubble telescope. Oh, the Hubble telescope is a very wide and advanced one. So it's not getting replaced, rather we are pausing it. It was launched by NASA in 2018 to explore the outer space of region. So answer is only one is correct. Consider the falling state, falling fawn of India, all in Redless sea turtles, Himalayan griffin vultures, and Indian grey wolf. All three are in the red list, but in a different category. And is asking which is vulnerable threatened species. If you observe uh, Anu Ridley Sea Turtle, these are a very rare kind of the species you going to see, especially in this part of India, in the Odisha region. So it is vulnerable. Himalayan griffin vultures, these are not vulnerable but near threatened by the way. And Indian grey wolf are quite available, so option is only one. Who among the following launched a civil disobedient movement to gain back the lost civil liberties of Goans? Goan struggle is considered to be one of the biggest, uh, one of the pity uh, condition of Goans even in the post independence. When Portuguese occupied Goa, when Portuguese occupied Goa, made their capital in 14, in continued till 1961. So Goa, which was a major hub of Portuguese, and Portuguese in India till 1961, it was operation which a Portuguese were through a military operation, a police force we sent them outside. The point over here is that Goa did not get the state of immediately. In this process, that means the independence period, 1942 until 1947, Goans also participated in the freedom struggle directly. So, which freedom fighter went to Goa and inspired those people? And Swiss, Ramar over Lohia. Vidi Savarkar related to Andaman Nicobar Islands, Mahatma Gandhi throughout India, but not in the princely states and not in the others. Palavai Patel throughout India, special reserve to Gujarat area, Ramar over Lohia. It's the right answer. With respect to World for India, 2019 comes the following statements. It's the first edition of Biennial. In fact, rather, it is the second edition of conference. It happened in the Delhi to speak about food security and what the government has come to do to handle the B2B and B2G so that the country will have a better food security. So, first is a long statement. It is a gathering of all global and domestic stakeholders in food processing sector with the objective of promoting food processing sector at a global level. That's why it's statement. So option B is right. Fenny Bridge is being developed as a corridor for trade and commerce between India and each of the foreign states, countries also called as Maitre that is Bangladesh. The biggest problem here is that Bangladesh seems maximum uh, native frontier with India and also land frontier with India. And such kind of uh, a Tripura. Tripura is the only state that is that covered, that has uh, boundaries north, the west and the south, the Bangladesh. So if you want to reach any northeast part of India, the only hope is that you got to travel via Bangladesh and this bridge is called as a Fenny Bridge statement. 28. With the reference of Union Ministers of the State consider the following statements. Question number 28 speaks about Council of Ministers. The Council of Ministers, the term is mentioned in the Indian Constitution. Here, the very important point is the Council of Ministers includes Cabinet, Minister of State, both independent and normal, and then Deputy Ministers, and then you 
going to see parliamentary secretary. All these are collectively called as the Council of Ministers. The 91st Amendment 2003 restricted the strength of the Council of Ministers should not be more than 15% of Lok Sabha that led to the reduction of this. Now here the head of cabinet is going to be Prime Minister. So that's how he is called as head of the government. So let us look at the question. They are part of cabinet and attend the cabinet meetings. So they are asking about MOS now. They are not a part of cabinet rather. They will be only invited occasionally whenever there is a need. So not all a minister of state falls under cabinet. They are different. They are either given a charge of independent of ministry headed by a cabinet minister or elected to specific item of the board related ministry. That's why we call them ministry of state independent and minister of state no. Option. To his right. Question number 29 with reference to the study with the Commerce Ministry, Trade War and Opportunity for India comes to the following statements. Uh, recently there was a trade war between India and sorry, between US and uh, North Korea and also China. So this conflict led to what India to take as an advantage of this conflict war so that as there is a demand, still there is a uh, demand is happening in the international market, but these countries are not supporting or not uh, uh, providing those, meeting those demands. So India can take the advantage of this opportunity. This was a document released by Minister of Finance, headed by Nirmala Sitaraman. The ongoing trade war between the US and China offers an opportunity to India for boosting exports of as many thrifty products such as chemical and granite to these countries. That's the right statement. The Indian products which can grab Export opportunities in the US market include industrial valves, organized rubber, carbon, or graphite electrodes, and natural honey. And that's my statement. So, both are correct. Question number 30. Recently, Global Peace Index 2019 was released by Australian think tank Institute, of, Institute for Economics and Peace. With reference to this identity, identify based on which of the following thematic domains the index ranks country's level of peacefulness. So, when you look at the Global Peace Index, let us guess what can be the sub-indexes in that. The level of social, societal safety and security, that's in fact a major aspect to promote peace. The extent of ongoing domestic and international conflicts, even that leads to an effect of peace. The degree of militarization, even that is what you call Juntaro, concept of peace. So, option 1, 2 and 3 are correct. Question number 31, which of the following are the main jute producing states in India? There is a very speciality about the jute. Jute has an absorption. It can absorb the moisture. Thus it is used in a very packaged industries. Uh, even if you want to cultivate jute, it has to be has to be conducive water supply on par with the rice cultivation. So, it got to be either supported by the regular rivers or the Himalayan rivers or that area should have a continuous rainfall. Rainfall more than 120 centimeters or 110 centimeters. And that too, the moisture has to be closely. 80% moisture got to be there. So, having this into consideration, let us finalize the states. Kerala, it is, it is, it has both the north and northeast monsoon and southeast monsoon, but they may not feel the answer. West Bengal, that's the right answer. Odisha, that also falls, falls in that. Bihar, that falls in that. Because Madhya Pradesh having a continental type of climate, they not fit in this form. So, eliminating option 5, eliminating option 1, you'll get 2, 3, and 5 is the right answer. Option C. Question number 32. Consider the following statements following the pair of UNESCO. A UNESCO body recently America was America upload from that. So let us look at the heritage sites. UNESCO 
the Buddha is a new kind of Renaissance, one is a cultural, another is a natural. Once the agreement is Renaissance, the union is going to give the grants to the state government, so the central government to make for the maintenance purpose. Kajra ho, the option is Uttar Pradesh, now it is Madhya Pradesh by Chandelas. Nanda Mahavira, Mahavihara, it's Bihar, it's a red statement. Patepur Shikri, it's Uttar Pradesh by Upper. Patadakal Mountains, the kind of eye hole inscriptions you're going to eye hole. Patadakal, they all have a Vesara kind of temple architecture by Chalukyas of Badami. It's not in, uh, it's in Karnataka. Shampanen, Pavgad, Archaeological Park, when that's in Gujarat, that's right straight. So, option 3 is incorrect, option 1 is incorrect. So, option 2, 4 and 5 are correct. Question number 33. Which of the following personalities or office? Officers and ministers or to Protem Speaker of Parliament in Lok Sabha. The concept of Protem Speaker is now mentioned in the Constitution. However, taking inspiration from the French Constitution, French conventions, whenever. The President summons the Parliament, especially the Lok Sabha. They should be Speaker, and Deputy Speaker. And we are going to see the combining MPs. As the MPs are going to be new, now they are supposed to elect the Speaker. That means the Speaker seat is now going to be, though the old Speaker, is not going to resign from his seat, but that seat is now going to be for a short term. He is not eligible to continue it. That's the point. So, what happens? President of India appoints a problem speaker. Recently, it happened with Devendra. Devendra, uh, the BJP MP, became problem speaker. The major job of this problem speaker is to sit on the seat for a while and conduct the oath of office. This is what you call the oath of office. In this way, all these people are now going to make the MP vote. Now, they officially became MPs and now they go for elections and they elect both the speaker and also the deputy speaker. So, the concept of Protem Speaker is to initiate the beginning process of the parliamentary process. So, option is President of India. Question number 34 speaks about tribe. Because the following statements with respect to tribe, it is statutory body set up by the government of India and a section 3 of Telecom Regulatory Authority, India Act 1997. That's the right statement. It issues orders and directions from the DDH services and mobile portability. Tri deals all with telephone, telephone also means spectrums, also deals with the D2H services. So all these are going to be part of it. The answer is obviously right. Both one and two are correct. 35 each of the following have been mentioned in the Schedule 1 of Indian Constitution. Part 1 deals about the name of the Part 1 deals about the union territories and these names are mentioned in where it is in the Schedule 1 of Indian Constitution. So Schedule 1 speaks about the name of states. Schedule 1 speaks about the name of states and Schedule 1 also speaks about the name of union territories. Option is both 1 and 2 are correct. 36. Come the following statements about now, National anti profiting Authority. National anti profiting Authority has been considered under Art Section 171 of the Central Boots of Service Tax Act 2014. Though you don't know the statement, you can easily identify that GST is not in 2014, rather it's 2017. So, the statement is incorrect. The National anti profiting Authority is an institutional mechanism under GST law to check the unfair profit making activities with the trading companies. So, they, many are applying for the tax exemption to know whether they are legally applicable or not, whether they are the right benefits or not, this now is going to work out. The answer is, two is a correct statement, two is a correct statement, one is incorrect. 37. With reference to Indian Coast Guard comes the following statements. It is an arm of Indian Navy responsible for guarding India's coast. If it is an arm of Indian Navy, definitely they should have a common flag, but Indian Coast Guard has a different flag, Indian Navy has a different flag, so definitely one is a correct statement. It operates under Ministry of Defence, that's the right statement because being a security aspect here. And that too maritime security being here. 
It has also been mandated to deal with the marine pollution. In fact, one of the major objectives of this Coastal Guard team is to look at the, the piracy, the sea piracy, and uh, safeguard the boundaries, spare maritime boundaries, and also look at the maritime pollution area. So the answer is to entry are correct. 38. Which state government has decided to launch the project Chula for the smokeless kitchens? Chula, the government of India launched a program called India started the project of Ujwala, it's about an LPG scheme. Taking inspiration from the scheme, there was a program called Chulla by Maharashtra government. Answer is D. Maharashtra. 39. Bhatan festival Sranayatra is recently celebrated in each of the following states. The concept of Sranayatra is related to Puri Jagannatha, to Puri Jagannatha. Before conducting the Radhayatra, they are going to conduct a ritual, a customary practice called Sanayatra. Called Sanayatra. This Sanayatra for Krishna, Subhadra, Balarama. After conducting Sanayatra, they are going to initiate Rayatra. That is Patisa. Question number 40. What are the following statements regarding cyclones? Cyclone, if you observe, actually meaning I. Cyclones happens in the ocean. Cyclones is uh, an important aspect over here. It speaks about Cyclones, if cyclone has to happen, the first prima factor is heating of river waters, that is heating heating of the waters. That leads to what? Low pressure because heating leads to what high temperature? High temperature. But easy to understand whether it happens in Indian Ocean or Arabian Sea. If you observe the Arabian Sea and the Bay of Bengal, the severe cyclone frequency in North, in North Indian Ocean has increased during the past season because of the shift of climate change. There was a trend of cyclones, right? Certainly, Bay of Bengal is comparably less prone to cyclonic storms than the Arabian Sea. In fact, if you observe, it is more in the Bay of Bengal because being in the eastern coast. And being in the eastern coast is very easy. The water can be heated. And here the waters are comparably cold. Why? It is connected with the land here. The land mass is wider and here the land mass is very less. If the land mass is there, the heat will be taken by land easily. So definitely it's going to be cold. As the land is very less aspect here, it's going to be taking less and definitely water is going to be heated more and that leads to what cyclones are happening in the Bay of Bengal. As cyclones move from west to east, if west to east, there is a scope that we are going to fire in the eastern margins. Majorly the Odisha, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu states are widely affected under the cyclones. The option is one only correct. A. 41. Consider the following pairs of Himalayan rivers with their corresponding tributaries. Ganga, Tamasa, the right tributary. Brahmaputra, Thons. Thons is a tributary of Yamuna. Yamuna, Tava, Tava is a tributary of Narvada. Ravi has a Sahu and Satluj has a Papsa. The answer is 1, 4 and 5. Question number 42. Consider the following statements. Question speaks about the cess. Before we 
proceed, we need to have a clarity first. That is the difference between tax surcharge. All these are laid by the government of India or the government of the respective state. The point is tax has an act. According to clearly mentioned a certain act and what the tax is going to be. Sus is going to be such and such as are called as a tax on tax. These are called as tax on tax. The major difference between cess and surcharge, if the reason is mentioned why the taxing it is called cess, like education cess, petrol cess, kushi kalyan cess, etc. Whereas surcharge, no reason is mentioned. No reason is mentioned. The options without look at the points. SS is levied on the tax payable and not on the taxable income. It's in fact that's what you pay. It's not on the income, but you pay on something else. SS can be levied on only direct tax. No, it's both direct and indirect tax. Education SS is on the uh, income tax side, by the way. Whereas a petrol tax, if you observe, it also speaks about the, uh, the, the, uh, the Nahi. It's given for the Nahi for the petrol tax, road developments. Unlike a tax, SS is levied to meet a specified purpose. That's the basic purpose of it. Tax we support. One and we are correct. 43. Consider the following statements about Pradhan Mantri Bhatiya Janoshadi Pariyojana. It is provided, it is to provide quality medicines free of cost to the people families through special kendras known as Pradhan Mantri Bhatiya Janoshadi Kendra. That's right statement. Bureau of Pharmacy PSC of India is implementing agency of BMJP, BJP. That's right statement. It aims to create awareness about generic medicines through education publicity. In fact, General medicines, India is commonly to be heard of general medicines because we cannot directly purchase the branded medicine which are very cost. India having a huge population and health is a, uh, one of the related principles of 47 of Indian constitution. It's a burden on the government to properly handle certain health aspects, achieve certain health standards. So general medicine is an important aspect of that and that the new general focus on only general medicines. Answer D1 to 3 are correct. Question number 44. Which among the following best describes aware? Aware over here refers to uh, concept was initiated by WHO with respect to antibiotics. Antibiotics. The intention of is to make sure the antibiotics are accessible to everyone. And you have to be very careful when you are watching it. And you also need to make sure you should be reviewed properly at the time. In this way, the combination is what you call access aware, access watch and review. That's important. Sorry, it's a reserve. It's a reserve. Question number 45. Consider the following statements. NHRC can take some to cognizance and issue notices to central ministries, states, and territories on the issues of public health infrastructure in the country. That's right statement. Right to life with human dignity is a part of right to life and it is a constant duty of the state, central and the state governments to ensure that right to life is guaranteed. Given that was accepted by the Supreme Court of India, the right statement both are right. Cover the following statements about the repo. If you observe, inflation or any other aspect in India should be controlled by two bodies. One is called monetary policy, the other is called fiscal policy. Monetary policy is released by RBA. As fiscal policy, the the budget is used by the government of India. Now, this monetary policy, we have both the quantitative and qualitative aspects. In quantitative, we are going to speak about the bank rate, Sierra. 
MSF record reverse cycle MSF is all do with what numbers a slight increase in number will lead to contraction policy and increase in number lead to expansion policy Repo means an instrument for borrowing funds by selling securities with, a, with an agreement to repurchase securities of a mutually agreed future date at an agreed price which includes interest for the funds borrowed. The answer is Repo reverse Repo MSF are totally called as market borrowings. These market borrowings were made by the government of with the RBI by the way. This will lead to what? Buying or selling securities. These are buying or selling of securities. Either by company or by RBI or the private banks to RBI. That's right statement. Basically the report fell below 6% of the first time since 2010. Any number fall is going to be called as expansion so that it will lead to more liquidity in the market. That's a very both positive and negative aspect. As the elections are nearby, they went for they went for the Reducing the repo rate. Both one and two are correct. With respect to world population prospects 2019, consider the following statements. By 2027, India is projected to surpass China as the world's largest populous country. Sounds very right. Following the India China reordering in 2027, the ranking of the five largest countries is projected to remain same until the end of the century. Both are considered to be right statements. 48. With respect to the recent Reserve Bank of India report on digital transactions in India consider the following statements. Digital transactions in India are set to rise four times by 2021. Uh, if you observe, it was in the 1990s or 1980s. 1980s, a digital concept came to India. So when you look at the 1980s to 2010, uh, 2010, it sounds four decades. So definitely, let's take even. 1% per decade, so four times sounds very familiar and right. That's right statement. Total digital transaction in volume terms record a growth rate of 5.58.8% during 2018-19 on the top of the growth of 50.4% during the 17-18. That sounds very right statement. Both are correct. Consider the following statements regarding sustainable development. They cover social, environmental, Diamonds only, that is absolutely wrong. So, combination of the society, economy, and the environment, which is what we are going to call as the stage. <coughs> So one is incorrect, so eliminating one <coughs> is asking incorrect statement, so one is incorrect. <coughs> Niti have entrusted with the task of conducting a stages and ministry of statistics and program implementation has drafted the national indication framework in consideration with the ministries and securities. Right statement. India pledged to adopt 15 out of 17 SDGs again as laid off in NTP. In fact, among the 70, India pledged to take only the 30. So, the remaining ones are not accepted by the India. So, outside statement. Consider the following statements regarding Tiger Reserve, Tiger National Tiger Conservation Authority. It is a statutory body. It was a statutory body. It is a chair by Minister of Environment, Forest, and Climate Change. That sounds right. Both are right statements. Thank you.